<laughs> Welcome back to I'll Read What She's Reading. I'm Anon. I'm Thera. I'm Selena. Welcome, guys, to the Halloween edition of I'll Read What She's Reading. Those of you who are watching on YouTube are getting a special treat because we are dressed up as our favorite, maybe not favorite, just some book characters. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to see what we look like, what we're dressed up as, hop over to YouTube. We also just shot so much TikTok content you would not believe. <laughs> yep. For probably like three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We love it. Full-fledged costumes, head to toe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We invested lots of time <laughs> and money into this. We did. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we were really hoping we didn't look stupid. <laughs> we look awesome. I think we look great. I think so, we too. We do. I think we look cool. Well, for this episode, we're doing things a little bit differently. Instead of talking about spooky books or thrillers, we're going to read your guys' spooky stories that you sent in to us. Yeah, we thought we'd mix it up a little bit. I'm excited. I mean, you guys are readers, so we were hoping you could send us in some beautifully written spooky, <laughs> maybe not beautiful, beautiful is not the word to use, but well written, good sto well written stories. Yeah. So I agree. We'll see if you guys delivered. We do haven't you, really read them yet. Do you guys have any spooky stories to start us off with? No, Reggie does, right? Mm -hmm. She's I been do. waiting. I do. Do you want me to start with yeah. my spooky story? Yeah, yeah let's do have it. Have I ever told you guys this? I don't, I don't think know. so. About I don't think when so. I was like eight years old? No. Am I? Okay. <gasps> Maybe. Cue the spooky music. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so when I was eight years old, my family was living in an apartment for like two or three months before, while our house was being built. And it was right across the street from a cemetery. Ooh. and there were a lot of little spooky things that would happen like and this is what's funny is i don't remember this story but my mom and dad would say that a lot of the times i'd wake up screaming that there was a shadow man in our room Shut i was sharing up. a room with my brothers and i don't even remember that that's what's weird but i can't oh. do remember there was one night that i woke up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night and i turned the bathroom light on went to the bathroom and I turned off the lights and you know how in the night when it's bright and then you have to like you turn the lights off and everything just like pitch pitch black yeah so I was like trying to get my eyes to adjust whatever I opened the door to the hallway and keep in mind like my eyes are it, everything is so black and I opened the door and the second I opened the door I see these two little kids sitting on the floor they're like cross-legged facing each other and they look at me the second I opened the door and it was weird because my eyes were trying to adjust. It was so black, but there was even like darker black. I don't know how to explain it. It was like a shadow on a shadow, but I could see him like clear as day still. It was so weird. And they turn and they look at me and they just stop. And I just stood there and I looked at them and I was just didn't know what to do. And then I hear my mom like go. <gasps> and I look down the hallway and my mom is standing outside her bedroom door and she's looking not at me, but at the kids sitting on the floor in the hallway. And so I'm looking at my mom and she's just looking at the floor where I was just looking. And then I look back and they were just like gone. And my mom hurries and looks at me and she's like, go to your room, go to your room. And I was like, okay. And I just went to bed, but it like didn't scare me. And your mom remembers. She doesn't that. like to talk about it. She won't oh. talk about it? No. Because it freaked her out. Because my mom's always been someone who's like, I don't believe in ghosts. And she thinks that's all silly and not real. So every time you like bring it up, she's just like, I don't want to talk about oh, it. Oh, I can't. I don't ever say anything around my mom about it. That's crazy. That's yeah. terrifying. <gasps> so that was when my brother would also say that he would see floating lights, Ugh. little floating balls, like orbs. And he was like f just barely five. And he would... We'd also like wake up and the cupboards in our kitchen would like be open. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. I've, it's crazy how like floating orbs is like almost like a universal experience for people that have like seen stuff like that. And also a shadow man with the top hat is also like a universal experience for a lot of people. I don't know yeah. if you guys have like heard of like the top hat shadow man. I've heard of like shadow people before. Mm -hmm. I had a friend in high school, her brother 
saw shadow people very regularly and so he would sleep with a knife under his pillow at night because the, he would wake up and they would be right in front of his face but they never had a face they were just a shadow i wonder if it was like sleep paralysis, paralysis. i don't know that's crazy mm-hmm. that's insane i'm like whew. yeah it's just weird that <laughs> i don't remember chills. like actual like the scary thing like i feel like seeing a shadow man in my room would almost feel scarier but i don't remember that at all maybe they were friendly kids yeah. so yeah i mean they were like it's weird because i can like almost still picture it but i can't at the same time it was like a boy and a girl that's all i remember and it was just they were just stand like they just turned and looked at me like oh that's crazy you super can remember weird. like yeah i was like was eight a boy and girl and and people always ask me like what kind of clothes were they wearing like what was their hair like to know kind of like what time period oh, maybe yeah. they lived mm-hmm. in i don't i can't really I, it was so it happened so fast but yeah super crazy that is That's creepy scary. do you have any michaela um i just have like stupid ones let's hear it i'll just make them really quick then we'll get into your guys' stories so i hate scary movies i hate it with a passion i have watched like a few because cole has forced me (laughs) but he doesn't like watching them with me because i get really sweaty okay and so like he won't like cuddle me and it's so like he just like okay we're not gonna watch them because you just get like so sweaty watching them and it's not fun for him because it's like gross Mm -hmm. sorry i'm a gross sweater when i'm nervous (laughs) (laughs) but so we were up in in the cabin in bear lake um for you guys for (laughs) these for those of you who don't know like bear lake is kind of just like a really small like lake town and they have like cabins kind of spread out through the mountains and they were watching i don't remember what i was upstairs and they there were a few people downstairs watching the movie and i was like i refuse but i could still like hear some of like the stuff that was going on i was like that sounds absolutely awful and terrifying i just couldn't i just like couldn't get out of my brain and i also when i was younger had really bad like night terrors and every time i watch like a scary movie my dreams are so vivid and it just like i never sleep well after so it was time for bed it was probably like two in the morning i like couldn't go to sleep without my husband and so we go to bed we're in our own room and i don't even know what time it was i think it was like 4 a.m all of a sudden the door to our room just opens just Mm -hmm. like straight up just like opens and i swear (laughs) someone was opening the door and i just like look and i i was awake and cole doesn't wake up for jack squat i could be dying and he (laughs) he couldn't wake (laughs) up and i literally just like had to tell myself like it's nothing it's nothing and i just went and closed the door but i just could not sleep the rest of the night because i felt like something was just like in the room you know when you have like that feeling Mm -hmm. yeah and i just was like and i went and told everyone the next morning and they were like testing the door out like i'm sure it just opened by itself and i was like i swear it like shut it really good they totally turned the handle on and so they were like testing it out and after that i was just like that's why we don't watch scary movies yeah I don't know. I just feel like you get a little more on edge yeah. about things. Yeah. I'm sure it wasn't really anything. I'm sure there was an explanation, but I was like so scared. Middle of the night, all of a sudden, I just see the door opening. And I was like, mm. this is it. <laughs> Tell <laughs> me oh. now. I'm dead. Oh, yeah. That's spooky. I feel like, and then, sorry, I have one more. It's all like when I'm sleeping. So I'm sure your mind just like really turns things. But once again they were watching a scary movie i had just shot a wedding so i was really tired and all of our friends were just downstairs and i left the door open for my husband to come in when he was done watching the scary movie and i had like the weirdest experience that i felt like someone was crawling onto my bed and i thought it was cole and cole was still downstairs it was so weird it was in my parents' house, and I was like, I don't know if my brain was just playing, playing tricks with me because I was so tired, but I felt like someone was crawling onto my bed, <gasps> and I, like, woke up, and I was like, Cole? He wasn't there, and this was before we had a dog, and so, like, I, it wasn't Zeus. It was the weirdest experience, and those were, like, the only time, like, two times that I've had anything, like, super crazy that I was, like, vividly remember 
I felt someone crawling onto the bed and there was no one there. It was so Ew. weird. So Ew. weird. That reminds me of a story that one of m- happened to one of my like, mom's friends or something. They were on a cruise. So while she was on the cruise back at home, her grandmother passed away and she's laying in bed with her husband and her husband feels something shift on the bed. You're talking about feeling like someone was on the bed. Yeah. Remind me of that. And her husband sits up and her so his wife's grandmother is just sitting on the edge of the bed and she's just looking at her granddaughter what and he just kind of like froze and he was like okay that's weird and he i don't know he's a guy so he was just like whatever like went back to sleep and then the next morning when they got like docked somewhere or whatever she got a message saying her grandma had passed away that night dang wow isn't that crazy that is crazy that is really crazy so he was like who's sitting on the edge of my bed like imagine though like you you'd be like wait what are you doing here yeah <laughs> when you're not aware Especially that that person like on had a already cruise. passed yeah like it's, it's such small like rooms and you're mm-hmm. just like hello <laughs> maybe they just thought they were just dreaming it or something yeah and like hallucinating mm-hmm. that's yeah. such a weird like mm-hmm. person to hallucinate though like your grandma <laughs> yeah like, so then he was like oh <laughs> I figure I should probably tell you. She, like, visited you last night. You know what? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Super weird. She, but like, really no, cool, too. It. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I have one. And then we'll read everybody okay. else's. So, my step-siblings and, like, that side of my family were really into watching scary movies as a kid. Like, I remember watching all of the Saws as, like, 12-year-old. We watched, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They were really into scary movies. So, they lived in this house... And it always kind of spooked me out a little bit. Never really felt like super safe. I always felt spooked. Mm -hmm. And come to find out. Now, take this story with a grain of salt. Okay, I don't know how true this is, but this is just what my step siblings told me. One night after watching a scary movie, they were using a Ouija board. Not a Ouija board. And they used the Ouija board and they got super freaked out. Whatever happened, freaked them out. They threw it in the trash trash day was that day they took the trash come home ouija boards on their bed (gasps) no so i don't know how true that story is that's just what they told me but if that's true kids adults whoever's listening don't use a ouija board i that is the one thing i will never ever ever do i just also Mm -hmm. remember watching like scary movies and i don't know if it was my mom or a friend of my like one of my friend's moms we were watching one of those that's like kind of more spirit vibes you know Mm -hmm. and i remember them telling me the movies you kind of watch if you watch those kind of movies it invites those kinds of spirits into your house Mm -hmm. so if you watch those movies you got to be careful i truly think Mm -hmm. that's why i refuse to watch them and that's why i think my dreams are so vivid probably oh i get the spookiest dreams especially when i'm pregnant that like i wake up and i'm like I feel like it happened yeah. and I can't sleep or function the next day. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's oh, get into your guys'. Sorry. I was going to say, before we read these stories, we really haven't read these yet because we wanted to live react. Maybe we should just include a little trigger warning that there may be some stories about death. I don't know. Paranormal activity. Paranormal things. Yeah. Violence. Yeah. Gore. If you're not into any of those things. We'll they might not be week. too crazy, but. You never know. We, we don't know what we're getting ourselves so, into right now. So true for sure. Okay. This is, this is so crazy to me. This person says, my grandparents have a spooky house. I remember growing up. I always hated going there because I was always feeling really uncomfortable. I remember around seven years old, my cousin and I went into the basement which was a mistake because it was creepier than the main floor. I kid you not, I watched his tooth come out of his mouth and float in the air in front of us. We screamed and took off running. Something literally pulled his tooth out and went right back into his mouth the second we screamed. I don't know what it was or what happened, but I never went back in that basement. What? The weird thing is it like went back in. So they started screaming and then... The ghost was like, never mind, take your tooth. Back. I don't see. Here's the thing. Some like spooky stories I hear like this. Well, I mean, I've never heard anything like this before, <laughs> That's but I just have to believe. I just have to like choose to believe it because you could be like, oh, there's no way. Yeah. 
Suspend you just all never... disbelief. That's why I don't know how to explain thinking. that one. It was the tooth fairy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. This tooth really needed to come out. <laughs> never mind. But then she saw that she scared him. Give and she's like, okay, I'll give it back. Just kidding. Yeah. yeah, it was the tooth fairy. Just kidding. Oh, okay. I was once walking past the game room and said hi to my brother. He was facing away from the door towards the computer. The computer screen was glaring bright white. Then after walking by, I thought, oh, was that him? His hair is different. The person I saw had longer, darker hair than my brother. Dark blonde, short back and sides. My brother, I'm guessing she's meaning like my brother has dark blonde hair and short. I took a step back to relook and no one was in the room. The computer was off and the screen was black. I shouted, Michael? To which my mom said back, he's at Kieran's friend. So he wasn't even in the house. After that, every time I walked past the room, I got a cold feeling and a shiver down my back. Safe to say I became a book re- worm rather than a gamer. Ooh. Ooh. That gave me like chills. chills yeah. yeah. Oh, it was scary. <laughs> you just have to like put yourself in the shoes of these people that this these things happen to because oh yeah that was i don't know that would be so like such a surreal feeling like thinking at someone else and you're like second guessing yourself and then you go back and no one was there mm-hmm. and you're like am i going crazy yeah that's <laughs> or did i, I actually like see like a ghost or you know it, i feel like it's so hard to like know if you're mm. just like visioning these things you know I yeah but like the fact that the every computer. time she walked by she got like a yeah. cold feeling <gasps> you, your body like your gut knows a lot you yeah know? it'll tell you a lot mm. okay this is my cousin's story she and her family and some friends went on a vacay to tennessee stayed in this cute airbnb at the top of a hill private road etc while they were there she kept getting the weirdest feeling that her kids weren't safe The second night she went to bed, she had a feeling someone was watching their Airbnb but couldn't see anyone. She finally went to bed and woke up to boots outside their bedroom door, like combat boots. She woke her husband up. He goes out but sees no one. He comes back in and told her, I have an overwhelming feeling someone is coming for the kids. We need to leave. He and the other husband on the trip ran outside to get the cars and took everyone's stuff with them. When they came back, they said, we know there are men watching us from the woods. We have one shot to get everyone in the car at once. There were four adults and seven kids. They literally threw kids over their shoulders, had them in their arms, even the older kids, and all, and they all ran to the vehicles at once. They didn't even take all their belongings with them. As they were driving away, there were two men standing on the porch watching them drive away. True flippin' story. They did report it to the police and were informed kids had been taken from that area before. Cop told them if those men had gotten the chance to take even one of their kids into the woods, they wouldn't have seen them again. <gasps> that I is the scariest thing I've ever heard. I full body chills right now. I'm going to yeah. be sleeping without my husband tonight <laughs> by myself at my house with my child. I'm a little terrified. Sleep over here um, if you want. <laughs> and I'll be being like, mom, can I stay at your house tonight? Yeah. That is so terrifying. Like a parent's worst story. Like worst nightmare, I mean. Well, and like, so when everyone has the same feeling, I just don't understand. Why would you put the boots outside the door? Is that where they're trying? They, I, think I, think they I think they were walking in the, like in the windows oh i see yeah like the people had walked up to the windows they saw the boots outside the door like footprints i'm assuming oh my gosh i hate that so much have you guys ever had this like a moment where i remember staying in an airbnb for like a work trip and we were in where were we it doesn't really matter california florida we were in florida and i remember like trying to fall asleep and then all of a sudden in the middle of the night i wake up and i'm like i need to go check and see if the front door is locked and I go out to the front door, unlocked. No. So I locked it and then went to right back to bed, like right as I went Ooh. back into bed. And I'm like, what would have happened if I wouldn't have locked the door? Sometimes Airbnb scare me. Yeah, same. Like the cameras you hear that people put in them. Or mm-hmm. did you guys see the thing on TikTok about the sliding yes. fake door and somebody was living in the Airbnb watching them? No. Yeah. Airbnb sometimes make me yeah. Honestly, the only time I really book an airbnb is if, if it's with a, like a large group yeah mm-hmm. besides that i'm like hotels mm. i don't know i just get kind of nervous about airbnbs yeah. especially if it's in a more like secluded look at us about to go stay in a cabin in the mountains <laughs> in two weeks we'll be fine we'll be, we'll fine. be fine i'll bring my daggers <laughs> <laughs> i'll bring uh, my pepper spray yeah we'll be just fine 
we'll nice. We're all gonna sleep really great tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, she says it's not necessarily spooky, but my mom is a psychic medium and this is the story i always tell people when they're skeptical so my my mom that's so cute my mom mom we just say mom, mom here but they must mom. not be from the u.s my mom does service at spiritualist churches where people can come and if there's messages for you she'll come to you and talk so she was on the way to one of these services and in her car on the way there there was a bend in the road and she realized there was a guy in the passenger seat who had a mangled face and could hardly make out his features and she obviously jumped a mile and nearly cr- crashed the car but recovered and managed to send him on his way to the light or the side whatever you'd like to call it okay so she goes to church and there's a woman there for the service and my mom can't see the man that she saw in her car whoa okay hold on so she goes to the church and there's a woman there for the service and my mom can see the man that she saw in the car standing behind the woman with his hand on her shoulder, his face fully intact and looking as he would have when he was alive. So my mom told the woman there that there was a man for her, described him, etc., and told her some details and the woman thanked her and they moved on with the service. After the service, the woman came up to my mom and said that the man she described was her best friend and had recently died in a car accident on that bend on that same road a few weeks before. And she said my mom described him perfectly. So she assured her that he was fine and had passed on and was at peace. And then she says she's spooky like that. <laughs> she's spooky like that. That is like I think so I- cool. But I, I just can't imagine parents. having those abilities. Oh, yeah. If you know what I mean? Well, I guess she probably has gotten kind of used to it because I wonder how it was at the beginning. You know, well, I'm sure people like that, though, don't. They're not scared. Of, like, it, it probably takes a certain person. Well, you also can probably feel the feelings of, like, the spirit. I think my mom for a while went through a phase where she was really obsessed with the Long Island medium. Do you guys know who that is? No. no. She's a medium. I actually went to one of her shows. Oh. And um, it was actually really cool. But a lot of the times the mediums, they like shut themselves off to the bad spirits and all, they only let the good spirits in contact with them, I think. But. Couldn't tell you how that works, but. That would be freaky nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Shout out to your mom. <laughs> mom. Seriously. I love that. I think it's so cute. Let's just start calling my mom. 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 Mm-hmm. I just remembered I have a story. Okay. Can I say it again? I'll of say course. It. I'll make it really quick. So I forgot that we went ghost hunting with actual <laughs> ghost hunters. She's not actually only forgot. I forgot. That's I literally cool. forgot. So it was at the Whittier Center. Okay. Oh, I've heard some spooky things about the Whittier. Yeah. It, I was like in such disbelief the entire time until... They did a few different things. So I don't know if you guys have heard like dowsing rods. They're used to find irrigation. So like you can go to a lot and it will point you towards the water on the land or whatever to help like find sewer and stuff like that. So how the dowsing rods work is there's like a tube that holds the rods, but you have no control over them. And literally i we had ghosts answering yes or no questions and my friend was the one that was doing it and they were like cross for like no and like go open for yes and she like literally bets on her soul that she was not controlling it also we were in a a playroom you know because it's like um whatever it's called we were in a circle and we were passing a ball around we were rolling a ball around to each other and i kid you not the ball would change directions mid roll and kept going to one of my friends the same friend who used the dowsing rods so like the ghost really liked her how did you get this opportunity to do this today so it's like this traveling group that like they'll post on i don't know how one one of my friends like let's go ghost hunting and i was like absolutely not i was shaking sweating but cause like yeah let's do it and they just like travel to different places that have had ghost activity so you have to pay money and there was someone there that was like i'm gonna cast out any bad spirits if any bad spirits like arrive like i have full power to cast and if out 
bad spirits and he was like i haven't had to do it in a while and i was like oh my god like, i hope this doesn't happen today <laughs> yeah so they yeah the ball it was like the weirdest experience i was seeing with my own eyes like this ball literally i was like rolling it towards someone else and it would literally just like change direction and go to w- that one friend it was so weird it was the weirdest experience i completely forgot i don't know how yeah, i forgot about that that doesn't surprise me because my sister-in-law dances at the whittier a lot and i can't remember any of the stories she's told me but she, from a lot of her dance teachers when like they're locking up at night have had yeah some interesting experiences Weird stuff. it's an old building yeah apparently there's like a ghost in the basement that's like a grumpy one he's not like bad but he's just like a grumpy ghost I and i refused scary. to go downstairs in the basement i left <laughs> I was like, I don't want to deal with grumpy ghosts. I was grumpy like, I want to, yeah, literally. A nice one. Talk to a little girl. Oh, that's scary. It was weird. She was playing with us. Playing ball. Ooh, that was weird. Anyways. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Sid. Hopefully that's okay. I mean, she put it, so. Hi, Sid. <laughs> hey, what's up? And my ghost encounter happened in 2018 when I was a sophomore in high school. So, basically... Where I'm from, there's a very haunted asylum slash hospital 45 minutes from where I live. And they do flashlight tours for flashlight tours of the building in the fall time. So me and a couple of my friends decided to go on one of these tours. This asylum, wow, I can't talk today. This asylum has four floors and we were on the children's ward on the second floor. As the tour guide is telling us about the floor, I clear I clear as day hear a little girl's laugh in the room next to us. There were no, there were no, (laughs) no, I cannot talk you guys. There were no children in our tour group. And I swear not even 30 seconds after I hear the laugh. I feel someone tug on the end of my pocket of the hoodie I was wearing. My friends weren't near me at the moment. It just freaked me out so bad because my hoodie was so thick. You'd have to tug pretty hard for me to feel it. So in conclusion, I'm in conclusion, I'm convinced that the asylum is a thousand percent haunted and this little girl's spirit was trying to contact me somehow. So that's my ghost encounter. Love the pod. Happy Halloween, you guys. Thanks Ooh, for the story. Sam. Yeah, that's spooky. That is spooky. I feel like I, I've been in a lot of like asylums or places that haunted houses are in. And there's this one where my dad used to take us to every year and they would specifically not do a haunted house in one of the buildings it's an old college because it's straight up haunted is it albion yeah have you been to albion no it's really good it's pretty good the kid i dated in high school's cousin owns it oh okay yeah Yeah, it's pretty good i haven't been there but it looks really scary it was it was really fun they have like six different houses and one of them's empty and you just walk around and it was it was creepy that's yeah. crazy. crazy i even get creeped out walking around my like unfinished basement <laughs> <laughs> so there's for sure a ghost living under there ghost Ooh. of a mouse you know i did wake up at 3 a.m to what sounded like someone knocking on my front door and that's not the first time that that's happened so lock your doors today tonight oh Reggie. you know lock them. i was like i checked my doors last night probably a million times since my husband's found town i was like <laughs> as you should all right I was staying at my great-grandparents' house with a bunch of family, so we were all sleeping on couches and air mattresses. I was sleeping on the couch in the sunken living room, my mom was on an air air mattress next to me, and my cousin was on the couch in the formal living room that was connected to where the dining table was. The door to the sunken living room was directly behind my head, where I was sleeping on the couch and was in line with the dining table. I couldn't really sleep one of the nights and kept hearing this weird whistle that sounded like a bird, but it was in the middle of the night, so it was weird. I felt like there was something behind me and was absolutely terrified to sit up and look. I found out the next morning that my cousin, who was sleeping on the couch facing the dining table in the other room, woke up at 3 a.m. and saw a man sitting at the head of the table like a statue. No. My cousin freaked out, covering his head with blankets, turning his phone, turning on his phone and computer to distract himself. And when he looked at the man again, he almost, he was almost freeze framed getting out of the chair. My cousin described him as a stocky, clean cut, well-dressed guy, which matches the description of my grandpa who passed away when i was one but he could carry a perfect tune with a whistle like a bird oh that was well written that was very she good brought it right back to the beginning she must listen to some or read some thrillers 
that was that was ended that was beautiful also too scary <laughs> also scary yeah, we can't get past the writing was so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> fabulous five stars five stars we must put it on good reads wow <laughs> yeah it's almost like um a toy story moment where they like have to freeze yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. that'd be so weird i wonder what the motivation was behind that because i've never heard of like a ghost like freezing. freezing that's interesting i don't know oh guess we'll never know it's just interesting they they can just come and go as they please you know what i mean mm-hmm. you're up Me? reggie okay this one says i used to work at a museum that was extremely haunted i'm from canada and it was a previous house of one of our political figures i had never had a paranormal experience until i started working there there were only two people working at any time and something would happen every day some of the smaller occurrences being furniture being moved on the second floor the piano would play by itself the doorbell going off and lights turning on randomly one day my coworker and i were sitting in the staff lounge that was in the back of the house it stuck out from the layout and the only thing below it was a walkout from the basement that we kept garbage cans in the walls in the whole room were full windows so most days it was a nice space to hang out on this day though we were sitting and reading when we heard someone we love that they were sitting and reading we were sitting and reading when we heard someone banging bloody murder on the door below us immediately we turned and looked in the backyard but there was no one down there we were the only ones in the house another thing that used to happen quite often was one employee would be walking around the house and we would see their and would see their coworker go to a different floor. When they got back to the staff room, the coworker was always in there and had never left. It would be full body apparitions, so it looked identical to the person it was trying to impersonate. We all believed it was trying to split us up, but we didn't know why. To say the least, I would never go there by myself. Summer jobs at summer jobs, am I right? Anyways, I love you guys in the podcast keeping amazing. Can't wait for my merch to arrive. We love you, but that's scary. That is I spooky. would quit. Same. Immediately. I could not. No money's worth being haunted. No. And I love. I loved the idea at one point of like buying an old house and like renovating it. Mm-mm. But I would need to have a full detailed history of everything that happened in the house before I move into it, or I don't think I could do it. This is another side tangent story. I'm sorry. So the childhood mm. home I lived in, I was always terrified of the basement hated being in there by myself just hated it in general come to find out as i got older someone committed suicide in the basement so you're you're kidding my little young heart knew that something was wrong in the basement yeah i just feel like you gotta listen to your senses and Mm -hmm. if something feels off you're most definitely probably right yeah okay here's a question for you i feel like we've talked about this before but if something spooky happens in the night like while you're sleeping because you know how we we are at times you're like what was that yeah will your husband just like get up and go see what it is kendall will get up every time and be like i'll go see and i'm like <laughs> yeah how are ask. you even if he hears it too and it like freaks him out he's just like no questions asked instantly like gets up and like just confidently walks around i'm like <laughs> i don't know it freaks me out if i asked mm-hmm. he would probably do it but he's most likely not awake i would Same. have to really like wake him up really like wake him up and sometimes i just pretend that didn't happen i think something fell in our living room I and mean, it really freaked me out and he went and looked but i think it was just like a pillow that fell off the couch or whatever but i would really have to like call call wake up like something something's outside and mm-hmm. he'd be like oh, okay i'll go check it out and he'd be like half asleep so but that's really sweet that Kendall will just go do that. Yeah, he just, uh, I'm like, oh, okay. It's a perk of having a dog. If my dog isn't freaking out, yeah, then you know I don't fine. need to freak out. All right, I'm going I'm to need to get a dog. Yeah, Can I, I borrow one of your dogs for the night? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Take your pick. Take your pick. <sighs> okay, oh, it's me. Okay. So I live in a small town with a population of like 3,000 people. Same. <laughs> I'm a, the assistant manager at the only theater within an hour radius my theater definitely isn't the newest either well when i first started working there everyone would have these creepy stories of a little girl who would run through the theater at night i of course was freaked out but then they thought they were just trying to but then they but then thought they were just trying to scare me after a while i hadn't heard anything until i was closing and our janitors told me they heard running downstairs upstairs in our projector room 
after we had all left. I still thought maybe they heard wrong until I had it, a scary experience. Scarus bones. <laughs> Sorry, I just read the story. <laughs> When we were close, we checked out each of the theaters for any trash or if the exit doors are locked up. Right before I was about to enter the theater, I heard laughing between what sounded like a mother and a daughter. But when I opened the door, there was no one. Keep in mind, we don't do this until all of our movies are over. Since this, since this, some of my staff says they have seen a little girl peek her head from our theater seats really freaking spooky by the way love your guys's podcast happy spooky season Ooh, honestly i'd leave the job i, I just do could it. not do mm. i just feel like anything with like little kids is just like i don't know why it just makes it 10 times worse it's just like they're like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah i don't know why it also makes you wonder like why are they still you know what I mean? Maybe mm-hmm. she likes movies. You know what? I, know. I don't blame her. I don't Honestly, blame her. that's a great place to hang out. I was just yeah. picturing the Lewiston Theater that whole time because that place kind of gives me the spooks. Movie theaters, like, even newer ones, I f- think during, y- you know, after hours when nobody's there would just be creepy. Did you guys, this is, <laughs> did you guys see that video of, <laughs> this is more funny, of this manager of a movie theater filming <laughs> the screen of everyone watching the taylor swift yeah, they're like holding hands. and they're like holding hands in a circle and they're all like <laughs> going <laughs> yes i saw that oh, that, that so cracked funny. me up it's so funny they do have cameras in movie theaters in case you didn't know i didn't know Whoop. shouldn't have made out with my Whoops. boyfriends in middle school sorry mom sorry <laughs> okay so this one um so she she shared a few experiences but um, I will share this one. And she said, the worst event for me personally was when I was 35 years old. My boyfriend died in a tragic accident on the farm where he fell and hit his head. It was a rough year and I was staying in the home by myself the winter after he died. All of a sudden one night, I felt a presence outside my bedroom window on the back porch. I couldn't see anything with my eyes, but I can in much detail describe what was there. This gets really gruesome, so be fair warned. And this has never happened to me before or after this event. I love that she included this part. (laughs) I do not do any types of drugs. And I am a successful registered nurse of sound mind and health. (laughs) As sound as you can be in this crazy world. (laughs) Oh, I'm like so nervous. So what I saw was a middle-aged man looking at me with blood running down the side of his head. And he was missing his eye and part of his head. Mike, my boyfriend, had fallen and hit the back of his head. So my first reaction was that it was him. I was not afraid and did not feel threatened, but I was kind of frozen in time. I still can't explain it. I had heard of loved ones reaching out after death, but wasn't sure and still am not sure it is true. But I remember in that very moment having the thought, this isn't Mike. He hit the lower back of his head when he fell. I waited on the side of the road for the ambulance. I performed CPR. The blood wasn't ever on the front or side of his face, only the back of his head. I know it sounds strange, but I never spoke of seeing this entity i wasn't sure how to even describe it let alone who would believe me so fast forward five years in 2018 i randomly got an email from a friend of mine's mother who was researching her uncle who was a bricklayer and he built our farmhouse in her research she found a few articles about the bates house i live in this is where it gets really creepy there is a two-page article from april 11th 1894 detailing asa bates suicide at 58 years old where he used a 32 caliber six shooting revolver to shoot himself in the temple right behind his eye and the bullet went through his left eye as crazy as it sounds admitting it i fully believe this was asa standing on my porch the emotion i felt for him is that he is merely an unsettled soul lost and confused it is also strange that i've never felt fear or discomfort living here it is a place of peace and serenity for me of the few painful events i have thousands more wonderful memories growing up on this farm I have a spooky extraterrestrial story for you guys. Love it. I grew up in a super small town in Canada, Prairies, aka lots of dirt roads and nothing to do. (laughs) My one friend and I would always go for late night drives down backgrounds. Backgrounds? Backgrounds? Maybe? Maybe she meant backgrounds. Just a pastime. One night as we were driving along, we came to an intersection as we looked both ways safety first (laughs) she's put in parentheses we noticed that the entire road on one side was lit up by a bright blue light there were no yards around no street lights 
that it could have been. It took up the entire width of the road and we could not see what it was coming from. Like smart teens, we got the heck out of there and went about our night. Here's where it gets even weirder. I got home and told my mom about it. With an odd look on her face, she asked what road it was on. Once I told her, she explained that my aunt and uncle used to drive down that road and always told people that they would see a strange light ahead of them but could never catch up to it. Turns out my friend's mom also had the same story from when they were teenagers and would drive that road as well. To this day, I can't explain it and only drive that road in the daytime. Love you all. Oh, interesting. That's so weird. I haven't had any, like, alien Me either. stuff. It was, like, one of my most irrational fears as a child. Really? It's like I couldn't look up at the sky when it was dark because every star or every little plane or anything I would see, I would think it was a spaceship and be, like, really anxious and scared. That's sad. That's so sad. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Do you see, like, the... I think it was from Elon Musk. Like oh, the, yeah. What is that called? It's Wi-Fi, isn't it? I don't remember. But it was really weird. It was scary. It was weird looking yeah. at it at night. I was like... I think it's still up there and it, you can see it every now and then. I think so. Yeah. Starlink? Starlink. Mm. That's what it's called. Yeah, I haven't it seen it. I haven't weird. noticed it. It's Wi-Fi. Is it? I think so. It was weird. I was at a corn maze hmm. and we we're like... Of course you were. <laughs> the corn maze. We're going to get picked up by a UFO. I know. That's Honestly, freaky. Corn mazes scare me. That's freaky kind of creepy like a haunted one you just like don't know what's around the corner and all of a sudden boo <laughs> not a fan <laughs> all right Spooky. this one you have to think th- remember what it feels like to be in high school okay just remember yeah you know, okay okay the good old days the girl that i drove to school her dad my old vice principal decided to prank me I have an irrational fear of clowns, so one morning on the bus going to an away game, I get a text from an unknown number, and it was a video of a person with a jacket on sitting at a desk in a dark room in front of a computer. When the video goes to show the computer, it is Google Earth of my house, and then the video shows the person who is a large person with a clown mask on, and the video ends. About 20 minutes later, I get another text from the same number, and it is another video, but this time the clown masked person is in front of my house the night before. It is just a video where he's holding the phone in front of him and he turns in a full circle until you can see my house. When I got the second video, I started crying. I was so scared as to why a person in a clown mask from a number I didn't know was at my house. Waking my teammates up around me, they start trying to call the phone number to see if it's me, if maybe someone will answer it. But when they call, it goes straight to voicemail and the voicemail is a clown's laugh. I was so scared. Oh. Once I called my parents to let them know what I was being texted, they laughed at me. Straight up started laughing as I am crying because I am so scared because they were in on the prank and knew the whole time that I was going to get those videos and texts from my old vice principal to win our prank wars. That is so mean. Yeah. So terrifying. And the fact that her parents are just like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. I that is never terrifying. Talk <laughs> Do you guys yeah. remember when there were those clowns? Kids? Yes. Yes. I remember babysitting my husband's siblings. This was before we were married and it would just be me with his little sister's home. And they both would end up in bed with me at night because they were so freaked out. I remember and they being were, freaked out. They were little. And so, and I was even freaked out. I was in college at the time, but like they were little, like nine ten years old and they were so scared clowns are just not not i was terrified it was like i had just gotten my license when that whole stuff like the clown epidemic whatever it's called that's so crazy (laughs) that's so the the (laughs) lives we've lived through (laughs) oh Oh. i was terrified like driving at night because i was scared that a clown was gonna like pop out of like a bush and just walk into the road with a machete i also had like a really irrational fear of clowns when i was younger i saw like an nci s episode where like a clown party clown like kidnapped one of the kids from the party and just like drove off and i was like clowns you're on my burn book (laughs) seriously (laughs) no offense to if you're a clown I'm sure you're a nice clown. I'm sure it's great. Only work. rodeo clowns are cool. <laughs> yeah. When you're at the rodeo. <laughs> when you're at the rodeo. That Ooh, would I spooky. would actually not talk to my parents or Yeah, that's messed also, up. Also, how old is your vice principal? Why is your vice principal texting you when you're like in eighth grade? <laughs> you know, that's what? a little it's a little sus. 
They obviously had the parents' permission, so. Ooh, I but I mean, on like the vice that. principal's side, that is a really good prank. <laughs> <laughs> If I am that girl, that's awful and terrible. But if I am the vice principal, that's pretty dang good. Back. That's pretty dang good. Oh. None of you ever do anything like that to me. I'm going to come knock on your door tonight. <laughs> At 3 a.m., please. <laughs> 3 a.m. In your costume. In my costume. Wearing. Yeah. When I was a young child, the house we lived in was definitely haunted. I was probably around five or six. It was a small house. My bedroom was directly at the top of the stairs. One day, me and my little brother, who was around two or three, was playing, were playing, was playing with, were were playing with his toys, was playing with his toys, I don't know, was playing with his toys. We had a snack break in the kitchen, come back to play with his toys, and one of them was missing. The ball that lit up and played music. We thought nothing of it. My mom found it on the bed, but it had definitely not been put there before but she left it there an hour or so later we were still playing downstairs nobody was upstairs when all of a sudden we hear a banging come to, coming down the stairs we looked and the ball was at the bottom of the stairs having been pushed down after it was on my bed a few weeks later i was asleep in the middle of the night night when a sharp smack on the face woke me up i woke up straight away in the dark room nobody was there i shouted for my mom she says mum sorry i should be saying mum who came in and there was a red handprint on my cheek which was too small to be from my parents but way too big way too big to be from mine or my little brother's hand it didn't fit any of our hands lots of other spooky stuff happened and we eventually moved out a couple years later nearly 20 years later i fear that the moments has stayed with me to this day oh that's very spooky yeah that's terrifying Wait, how old was she saying she was uh, you, you're just like this little kid and you wake five up six in the face by a ghost Ugh. i thought that i couldn't touch you well i mean think about it they open mm. cupboards that's true they're pushing balls you know mm. they must be able to slap you too. that's scary that's scary oh my gosh I had a whole bunch of ideas on where that was going but i didn't think that's what was gonna happen <laughs> i thought like the ball was gonna be like going off in the middle of the night but she got smacked in the face in the middle of the night that's poor actually thing. terrifying that is so terrifying hmm. ow poor girl we'll end this on a a spooky but funny note this is not the kind of spooky you're thinking it's going to be but we got spooky. this submission and i was like we like i just we just had i just felt like we had to share it to kind of give you um some leave it on a a funny note and not a a spooky one uh (laughs) this one says the spookiest thing that has ever happened to me was when i was sleeping with my mom and dad and suddenly the bed started creaking and then in parentheses it says it was not a ghost absolutely not (laughs) that is actually so terrifying i don't know how old you were the child is in the bed i just that is that is a no for me <laughs> okay let's that's face. very spooky super spooky that's kind traumatizing of, yeah yes Aww. anyways um <laughs> why i feel kind of weird that we left it on that one but i don't know it's we wanted to funny. try and help you guys not have maybe maybe help you not have nightmares i feel like i'm gonna have nightmares tonight i legit might be like sleeping in my parents house it's all right I love no it. shame no shame well guys that was our halloween episode we just want to thank everybody who sent in a submission once again you guys really pull through for us whenever we do these kinds of episodes we had so many that we couldn't read them all but we want to say thank you we appreciate you guys also for those of you who have ordered merch we have some really exciting news and merch will be shipped out within the next week We will keep you updated on our Instagram story, so be sure to check on those. Also, be sure to check out our TikTok. We, like we said, we recorded a lot of really fun content that we're super excited about in our costumes. (laughs) And if you like our podcast, be sure to give it five stars and leave us a review. You can also follow us on TikTok and Instagram. Our username is What She's Reading Pod. And stay safe out there. Have a happy spooky season. 
we love you guys and we will see you next week bye, bye. <laughs>